All right. In the last video, we collected a bunch of data. We photometered two stars, an R. Lyrae star in the globular cluster M28, a variable star, and a reference star. And we did it in a whole bunch of different images simultaneously. And all that data was saved to a comma separated value data file. So in this video, I'm going to show you what to do with that data, how to analyze it so we can look at the light curve and measure the period of the variable star and look at its folded light curve. OK, now share my screen. Okay, so just to remind you, uh, in the last video, this is the globular cluster. Here's the R. Lyrae star, here's the reference star, and we photometered this in a bunch of images. And now here we are in the graphing tool, and we're gonna go to the variable option. We're gonna upload that data. Now when you go here, there's just some generic random junk data. Don't worry about it. We're going to overwrite that, so we're going to upload the data file. And I save that to, it's called um, Afterglow Photometry. In my case, it was 689. OK, here it is. So it loads the data in. We have Julian date. And on each Julian date, we have, uh, that corresponds to a single image, and in that image we had two stars, source one and source two. And here you see their uncalibrated magnitudes. And they're plotted here. Source one, which is the first star that we photometered, which was the variable star, and the second star we photometered was the reference star. Now, if you photometer those in the opposite order, your photometry uh, will be flipped as well. So the first thing we need to do is to identify which star is the variable star. And for us, it was the first one. And by selecting this, what's gonna happen is we're going to subtract the reference star value from the, the variable star value. That's the first step in calibrating. And then the second step is to enter the true magnitude of the reference star. And this is in the lab above the finder chart for this particular reference star in this globular cluster is 12.98 magnitudes. And what that did is it changed the scale here, the Y scale. Now notice the numbers are upside down and that's because the magnitude system is inverted. Lower numbers are brighter. So this plot is putting the bright stuff at the top. And if you look at the data label here, we have the variable star magnitude that's the uncalibrated magnitude, plus a correction constant. And that correction constant is the true value minus the uncalibrated value. That difference is the correction constant. We've added it on to the variable star in two steps. First, we took the variable star magnitude and subtracted the reference star magnitude just by selecting which star is the variable star. Then we added in this true value for the reference star. Okay, so we have a light curve. And as you can see, uh, we have one, two, three, four, five, six days of data. It looks like we skipped a day in here as well. And each night we have uh, a handful of observations. Uh, one observation on the first night, but a handful on the other nights. And this is a variable star. So as you saw in the period folding video, it's really oscillating like a sine curve, but we only have a little snippet of it each night. So when the sun came up, we couldn't collect any more data. So we are going to period fold. One way you could do this is guess at the period and um, then subtract that period from each component over and over until all the data is on top of each other. But built into this tool, in the you know, custom graphing application, we have this option called periodogram. If we click on this, this is something called a lom scargle transform. It's like a Fourier transform. And you don't really need to know what any of that is, but it calculates something called a power spectrum. You just have to give it 
a start period and a stop period. It's basically testing each possible period to see which one gives you a good coherent data set. For our libraries, it's good to go from about 0.1 to one. For Cepheid variable stars, which you'll do later in the lab, you want to go from maybe about one day to 100 days. But here we're testing every period between 0.1 days and one day. Most RLIRIs have periods in that range, and you just have to find the maximum over here. And that's happening at a period of about 0.56 or 0.57. So this saves you a lot of guesswork. So let's go to period folding. And you can put in our guess here, 0.56. And that's folded all the data, day after day, on top of itself. And you can see the pattern, a rise and a fall. And often with these folded light curves, you plot the data twice. It's just customary. So this data over here is not different data. If you look carefully, it's the exact same data just plotted a second time. But that's just to help you see the cycle of it. Now, the periodogram just gives us a guess. We can fiddle with this. If we go from 0.56 to 0.55, it's not as good. 0.54, it's getting worse. 0.53, worse. Let's go back to 0.56. There's 0.57, that's pretty good. 0.58, falling apart. 0.59. So you see it's really sensitive to the period. Something between 0.56 and 0.57. Let's try 0.565. Okay, that's really good. You can see it's coming up and then fading down and then it cycles back and repeats itself. Okay, we just have to enter a title and axis labels. So this is an RR Lyrie star. This one is in the globular cluster M28. Uh, you may have a different globular cluster, so set your title appropriately. And this is a folded light curve. Should point that out uh, because you know, the data has been manipulated. It's been folded on top of itself and two cycles are plotted. So it's good to indicate that this is a folded light curve. And for the axes, you can see down here, back when we were in light curve mode, it had the Julian date. But uh, let's go to period folding mode. You can see it now starts at zero. The first data point is zero, and everything's been folded. So we're getting one, two periods, essentially. So it's going out to about 1.2 days. So on the x-axis, let's call this um, its time. But what it really is is period folded time. The units are days. The y-axis, we have the magnitude, but it's actually the apparent magnitude, and that's actually the calibrated apparent magnitude. Okay, and then you can save that. Uh, PNG is the higher quality file, but you may also want to save the JPEG. Uh, the, the PNG is too big to upload into WebAssign. You can always upload the JPEG instead. Now, before ending the video, you know, this is one of three astronomical exercises in this lab. This is the R Lyrie star, where you as a class will collect a common data set. After that, you'll do essentially the same thing with the Cepheid variable star, not in a globular cluster orbiting around our galaxy, but in a different galaxy, a nearby galaxy, but definitely outside of our galaxy. And those Cepheids, they take longer, so we've collected that data for you. Uh, but the analysis is exactly the same. And then the last example will be a galaxy even farther out, a far away galaxy. And there we're going to be using a supernova as a standard candle. And for that, the supernova is not variable, so you won't need to fold the light curve. So with the supernova, you'll be saving this kind of purple plot, the first tab. You won't have to worry about the periodogram or period folding. And it will look something like this. So it will have a peak, and then it should fade away. And the peak brightness is what you'll be looking for in that case. And 
The only difference other than the title should be appropriate is that it's no longer period folded time, the Julian date that you'll be plotting. Okay, that's it for this video.